Thank you everyone for joining us for this webinar. For VPK by Maharshi Ayurveda, I am Valerie Brown, and this is our self-care strategies for Vata season webinar. Cool weather, shorter days, longer nights, how do you think your Vata is holding up this season? Self-care strategies include diet, lifestyle, and herbal recommendations to boost your digestifier and help you stay warm, grounded, and calm all autumn. Joining us today are Ayurvedic experts, Dr. Mark Toomey and Helen Toomey. Dr. Toomey is the director of Maharshi Ayurveda at The Raj, which is America's premier Ayurvedic health spa. He offers consultations, educates, and oversees the Panchakarma programs for guests. And Helen Toomey is a Mar Maharshi Ayurveda wellness consultant. She lectures at the Raj and gives seminars and webinars in the US and abroad. And she's also a certified transcendental meditation teacher. Welcome back, both of you. We're so excited to have you here. Thank you, Val, and thank you to all the Mati participants. We're not just feeling in the pink, that expression for feeling good, we're feeling in the orange. <laughs> Lovely warm colours because it's got very, very cold. So we are as cosy as toast and we wish the same for your beautiful audience. <laughs> Wonderful. We're so excited to hear what, uh, what advice the two of you have to offer us today. So let's get started with a couple of questions to begin. So we've heard that fall and winter is considered Vata season. So could you explain that to us, please? It says in the Ayurvedic text that for Ayurveda, uh, it goes swastya, swastya, prashanam, ayurasya, vikar, prashanamcha, which means that Ayurveda is about maintaining balance and prevention and to help with people who actually are out of balance. And so for that, we have certain regimes. They can be daily or seasonal. So in terms of winter and fall, we have what is called Ritu Charya, which is the seasonal regimes that we should be adopting in order to maintain balance. And so also part of that is that transition period, which we're going through now. It seems like in Iowa that winters come a bit early, but there is a transition period. It's called the Ritu Sundays, which is this transition period from fall to winter. It's a bit like the gap. And it usually starts, we'd say, about seven to 10 days before the beginning of winter and seven to 10 days in winter. And so it's a time we start to adapt new regimes to deal with the coming changes in weather. Now, of course, those of us who live in the Midwest uh, are very much affected by changes in weather. And what do we notice? Well, the days get shorter, the wind becomes colder, and it becomes much more dry. So these dark, less light, cold, and windy, these are, we'd say, aggravating factors for Vata. So we have to change to adapt to that. You know, human beings are very adaptable, and we need to be in terms of these dramatic changes in climate. Uh, for instance, it's been shown that winter has a 25% higher mortality rate than summer, which is really significant. And one of the reasons for that is these epigenetic factors, such as the lack of sunlight and the cold days, really change the genetic expression within us. Sometimes it's more beneficial, sometimes it's not. For instance, there, there are more, let's say people die more of cardiovascular problems, respiratory problems, digestive problems, metabolic problems in winter and late fall. And the reason for that, because of these dramatic changes in our genes that take place. So we've always been adaptable people, but we need now even more so to change our routines dramatically because of these particular factors that affect us so much. So for instance, the lack of light or lack of sunlight leads to drops in uh, vitamin D levels, which we know have great effects on our health. There are more pro-inflammatory markers in the body and great dramatic changes in the genetic expression of genes that affect our immune system. So adopting new regimes is really important to allow even to the level of our genetic expression adapts to changes in a beneficial way. 
So Ayurveda has these particular types of routines, such as we will be talking about today, that allow us to change from one season to another in a comfortable way that allows our bodies to make these adaptations to become more flexible on many levels of our physiology. Yes, and if you look, Helen will be talking about why Vata is so much associated with this particular season. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So because it's Vata season, what are some indicators that we can look for that we may be in line with the season or that we could possibly be imbalanced? Excellent question. Uh, so the immediate answer is, I'm going to address uh, Vata predominant Prakriti, Vata predominant mind body type. Because as you can imagine, uh, this is going to be very extremely relevant uh, to those that have that particular uh, neurophysiology. But these, many of these points also are going to help people uh, that could have Vata secondary in their Prakriti, or for those perhaps over 50, uh, where Vata considerations come in more. As you know, a lot of people, as they get older, actually want to go to warmer climates, more, more Vata in the physiology, or for anyone that has a Vata imbalance, whatever your mind-body type or your Vikriti type. So let's have a quick review. Mark's mentioned the most important ones there, uh, referring to Vata being the Vata season uh, of fall and winter. So let's review the qualities of Vata. Vata is cold, it's dry, it's light, it's rough, it's quick, it's moving and irregular. And just a, rem a reminder, very important, just so that we really understand this intellectually, Vata, the two maha bhutas or the two elements that make up Vata are air and space. Therefore, we nickname it the airy principle, which is obviously light. So a Vata predominant physiology, someone is lighter, a lighter, thinner physiology. Now, if they're in balance, then what do we have? We have a quick, alert, bright mind. We have someone creative and bubbly and uh, an energetic. We have a person who, is, uh, who, who embraces change, who at the same time is a person who can have good digestion. Uh, they can have uh, fall easily asleep. Uh, and at the same time, they can also have good elimination. Um, that's on one level. But if there's a vata imbalance, which would be particular, uh, that's when we're addressing this season, where it'll be even more aggravating. This is what we're going to see. We're going to see that that alert, creative, quick, energetic mind it somehow becomes more spacey, as the name suggests, air and space, spacey, not grounded. Suddenly, they're more anxiety, worry, fear, uh, inability to focus, this is a big one, inability to be decisive in making decisions, which what makes one even more stressed. And obviously less resilience to stress because Vata governs the mind and the nervous system. Then in addition to that, we're going to find the digestion could become irregular, more tendency perhaps to gas. Remember, it's the air air principle, so more tendency to gas, more dryness in the colon. And uh, also things like sleep, there's going to be more tendency with the more aggravation to mind and nervous system, there's going to be more tendency to make it more difficult to fall asleep. And you know from a past uh, uh, presentation that I've given uh, that sleep is truly, as Shakespeare said, gentle's uh, wondrous and, um, and sweet nurse. So difficulty falling asleep um, and also things such as uh, more, more constipation as, as well. So they're just some of the indications and we should never ever forget Vata governs all movement, all transportation of energy and food and water and information, 
and it governs all intelligence. So this is so important because as we all know, or just even if we don't for, for new watchers, Bata <laughs> is the king of the doshas. Now, my mother always said to me, if you've got a problem, you always go to the head. You know, you go to the pilot or you go to the head. or whatever. So it's the same with Bata, being the king of the doshas because it's the only dosha that actually moves. Unlike Pitta and Kapha, it, we really want to keep it in balance because by doing this, we're going to have more likelihood of it not further moving into pitta and kapha and calling, causing all sorts of mischief. Now, I'm mischievous, but this is a mischief I don't want. <laughs> That's great. Now, it, it sounds like so much of vata to like the indication of it being irregular digestion or uh, constipation, di digestion compromised. What kind of dietary recommendations do we give to balance vata? Is there particular foods? Is there preparations for foods? Sure. You know, part of Ritichari is to understand what we need to do, what we need to change in order to adapt to these seasonal variations. So what happens with Ayurveda is we understand the changes in terms of, we would say, ras, which means taste, and Mahabhuta, which means the subtle energies and so as Helen said vata means more airy spacey principle so that's one of the dominant say principles that we see in winter so that means we should have more heavy food we don't want to create more lightness so winter is not the best time to be start fasting or going on a weight loss program so we need to have more oily unctuous foods it should be warm never cold and dry uh, we also notice that uh, taste should be more pronounced in certain foods. So we have six tastes in the Ayurveda. So we should have more sweet, sour, and salty tastes because these are the tastes that balance vata. And they also are very nourishing to us. So we would say in terms of food, we should have more whole grains. Rice and wheat are very sweet. Uh, more dairy products because they're also sweet and they're very strengthening. Our strength in general, our bala, which, which is our physiological strength as well as our immune strength, tends to go down in uh, winter. So we need to maintain more immunity and more strength. So we should eat more food, more nourishing food. The other thing is that there's more dryness. People might notice that their skin that gets more dry, that there's more dryness in the physiology. So more oil in the food, that uh, sour food. So Things like uh, lemons, putting some lime or lemon on your food every day or having a warm lemon drink uh, in terms of sourness, sourness such as things that help with our digestion, people eating a lot more uh, probiotic foods which tend to be more sour such as lassi which is made from yogurt, um, kefir, uh, tempeh, uh, kimchi, sauerkraut, these things are more sour by nature but they really affect our gut bacteria in a tremendous way. And then uh, sour, salty things are obvious. Just, it doesn't mean you have to put more salt. You have to be very careful about that, of course, if you have high blood pressure. But salt is a very important part of our diet. And a lot of the churners in Marisha Ayurveda, such as the Vata churner, has a wonderful balance of all six tastes that one can use. Mm -hmm. But that's in terms of foods, uh, eat well, eat often, and, uh, and be happy. The other thing is digestion. Our acne actually tends to increase in winter because the vata is a wind and it fans the fire. Just like in California now with the, the terrible fires there now, if there was no wind, they'd be able to control that. So in general, we say the wind fans the flames in Bayevita. So it tends to bring our acne up more. So as the external heat goes down, the internal heat comes up. So our acne actually tends to be quite strong in winter. And if it's not, then we certainly need to take care of it. And that's why we can eat more unctuous, heavier foods uh, that, that allow us to digest that more successfully. So in terms of daily routine, it's very important to get rest. As I said, our physiological, immunological strength tends to reduce in winter so getting rest is very important 
And, you know, we still need to make adaptive changes in our lifestyle. Uh, as I said, winter tends to have a higher mortality rate. One of the reasons winter can be more stressful for many people, you know, having to drive here in the Midwest through snow and ice and having to deal with those extremely cold temperatures. Um, and also it says it tends to peak more around New Year, Christmas and Thanksgiving. So uh, the reason for that is obviously uh, the organization that people have to do to travel and get to places and perhaps the relatives they don't like they have to meet. Sometimes that can be a bit stressful. But anyway, we need to take more care of that, particularly our ability to adapt to new stresses. So one of the best ways that I've found is, is oil. And in Ayurveda, we have a daily routine and also we recommend that more in Ritu Chari, particularly in winter, is an oil massage with lovely warm uh, sesame oil is usually recommended. Uh, if you're more pitta by nature and sesame oil aggravates the skin, then olive oil is very good. So Muffy makes some very nice oils for vata oils, very lovely. Uh, but you can make your nice uh, olive oil with a little bit of essential oils in like uh, vetiver or frankincense or jasmine. Mm -hmm. uh, a lovely warm oil massage is so good for the skin. You know, if, if anyone has ever had a massage, you know that afterwards you feel very relaxed. Mm -hmm. So it's not just for taking dryness out of the skin, it's for calming vata down. You know, we literally have, you know, if you take one square centimeter of skin, there are thousands of touch receptors there. So imagine if you're physically mm -hmm. massaging the whole body, that you're sending all these lovely signals to the brain saying, calm down, relax, be happy. And so afterwards, it's a very good effect on calming vata down. So a daily warm oil massage is very good. Um, exercise, it's very hard to exercise when it's very cold. Mm. And so if you do go out, really, you have to make sure that you rug up well. You know, you shouldn't be feeling cold when you're out exercising or walking. Um, so a good coat and hat and gloves is very important. I don't think people are that silly that they will go out with those things. But I do see a lot of people here at the Raj, you know, they go outside with their hat on. They get scolded for that because there's an old saying in Ayurveda, the cold wind blows away the mind. And so it can very much affect how we think and, uh, and how our state of mind is. And also, of course, it gets much darker. In, in winter, you know, the days become shorter. And that has profound effects, as I mentioned, on our genetic expression. Helen, we mentioned that in terms of how that affects our emotion. So as we always sort of joke here in, at the Raj, when we're doing Panchakarma with Vata, it's oil, oil, more oil, and oil in every orifice. So <laughs> it's very, very good for balancing Vata. Mm -hmm. That's what it sounds like, put it on the skin, Get it in the body, take it in, however you, however you can use oil. <laughs> oil up the nose. Oil up the nose. Oil on the body is just very, very good for balancing vata. Yeah. Just even from the point of view of, of perhaps you know, the immune system or germs or whatever, if there's dryness inside the nostrils, extreme dryness, then that's a way bacteria can actually get in the bloodstream. Very, very important mm -hmm. oil. Um, you know, in, in the nostril, a little bit in the in the ears, uh, that type of thing. Of, of course, it's the same way with your travel. Before mm -hmm. we get on a plane, we've absolutely in the morning always had the uh, abiyanga and a warm bath, uh, and then a little bit of oil before and during a flight. In the nose, a little bit in the ears, even a little gargling in the throat. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm so curious too. I love to hear people's personal tips about how they take Ayurveda with them. How do you take this oil with you on, like if you're in the car or on a flight, are you, are you taking a big bottle of oil or are you just a little tiny? Okay. You sell these little bottles at the Raj and you can okay. take them anywhere. And they're very convenient. They're little plastic bottles and they have a little flip up dropper. And so you can very easily, you flip that up and then you know people often look at us on the plane because we put our head back and put a few drops up the nose and sniff it up because Aeroplanes tend to be as dry as the Sahara Desert. So it's and cold. So cold and dry. Cold and dry, yeah. If you aeroplane for longer than 12 hours, you get off feeling like a dried up sponge. Mm -hmm. And so, of course, putting oil up the nose is really important to maintaining the balance of vata, drinking warm vata tea and, and eating warm food. So, 
just these little strategies to help us maintain balance, you know, and yeah. allow us to get over the changes of time zone changes that affect us. But, you know, we can always adapt strategies that help us minimize the effect. Mm -hmm. I, of course, am so product loyal, like my husband, <laughs> that I prefer, because I'm the one that organizes the oil, uh, I usually have an empty bar. I'll have one bar to oil that's small that I'm allowed to keep. You know, when you're allowed to go on the flights, you've got small amounts of liquid that you're allowed to take in my spec. So I've always got my bar to oil for both of us. And I'll tend to perhaps have a used Mappy uh, little glass bottle this side mm -hmm. with our oil in that, again, to nose, et, et cetera. Smart. Very smart. Yeah, because it's Vata season. If you have Vata in the physiology, travel increasing vata is a lot happening for us during the season exactly but even though we're discussing vata season all year mm. because because the world is spinning out of control with so much activity because people travel 24 7 mental focus 24 7 so much stimulation with our technology all that movement and all that travel every way we have those little strategies whenever we travel Mm hmm Now, how, how does, I mean, I think most of us can relate to traveling and you get there and you feel a little spacey or you're talking earlier about the space element and how it relates to spaciness in the mind. How does and, and how does and why does Vata affect the mind and the emotions in that way? Vata governs the mind. It governs the mind and the nervous system all our thinking and all our speech and as we know circulation and respiration elimination all these different things so because it governs mental activity <coughs> and because of the fact with vata season there could be if we don't uh, actually uh, understand or utilize these tips to keep it in balance then what's going to happen is, obviously, because Vata governs mental activity, there will be, as we've mentioned before, an increase in worry and fear and anxiety and restlessness and lack of ability to focus and that slight, it could be a fogginess or uh, inability to make decisions. So it makes sense from that point of view. But also... As we know, um, you know, Vata also governs our senses. It governs our senses, our particular, you know, prana Vata, the subdosha. So because it governs our senses, could you imagine winter is for many people, it, it's a time of a little bit of, shall we say, more sensory deprivation. All I mean by that is it's more austere. We don't have all the blossoms out. It, it, it's tending to be more grey. As Mark said, there's tending to be more darkness. Uh, there's tending to be obviously less light during the day. Now, I'm sure that everyone is aware that there is something that was realised for many, many years that there's effect, especially in uh, cultures that have long, long winters, uh, that there was effect, uh, that there was actually a affecting us mentally and emotionally. And this was actually, there's an expression coined um, uh, by a great advocate of, of transcendental meditation, uh, Dr. Norman Ros Rosenthal, and he actually named this, he coined the phrase seasonal affective disorder. It's when you're feeling a little heavier, a little bit more the blues, um, uh, not quite as, pos uh, as positive. And again, this is in direct response to the environment. And so we need to have strategies to, and so emotionally, obviously, that's going to be affecting uh, the way that we perceive the world. You know, things like cabin fever as well. That thing, I've got to get out, I've got to get out. Uh, mind you, it's a time when I often, I'm just giving you a very small personal strategy there, and that's the fact that I put on my Pandora, uh, <laughs> sound Pandora, 
and I put on some fabulous music. And if I don't have a chance to go out because it's so cold and I can't go anywhere, I do some cha-cha, some rumbaba, and I actually dance at home. And I can't even begin to tell you how happy it makes me. And more orange in the way of decorative things to nourish my emotions, to, to nourish that because there's so much austerity outside. So more colour, more flowers and some more delightful aromas to nourish me so that there's no deprivation. I just think to myself, Mother Nature's just wearing another variation of her beautiful gown. Mm. She's crowning us with uh, more pristine, it's a more pristine but very, very pure um, time, barter time, and I don't think that we should ever get caught up in that fact of, oh, my God, it's, it's, it's barter season and I'm feeling cold. Remember, life is a choice and we can always choose the positives of what to do in this season. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I love the recommendation to dance too. Dr. Toomey, are you getting in on that, on the cha-cha as well? No comment. <laughs> okay, <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. I love that idea though. I do that at home too and it's a very fun practice to just... But that's you. It costs nothing. Do it. Yeah. And you feel very enlivened and excited and happy afterwards. <laughs> Wonderful. It's very important as Helen said to make these these changes because as we said it affects us on a mental emotional physical level dramatically these changes in our, our, our season and so we need to have knowledge and that's what this little program is for knowledge in our arsenal of weapons to help us maintain balance you know <laughs> and, and bliss because... you know for people with seasonal affective disorder it's a very heavy disease you know in uh -huh. terms it's almost depressive so you know they sit in front of a light box all day for a certain amount of time without making other changes. See, it's one change you can do is expose yourself to some light. But we would say that there are more strategies than that, more strategies to help balance vata up with the emotions. Mm -hmm. diet, you know? So that's the purpose of Ayurveda, just to maintain and bring back that level of balance. Mm -hmm. The doshas are always going out of balance. We're bombarded by and, doshas, and, and bombarded. Yet, and yet, somehow they tend to have a tendency, the body always wants to maintain that balance. So traditionally in our body, we make the right decisions or our body will maintain those adaptations. But sometimes without the correct knowledge, we, we maintain a path that goes down and the disease start process starts. And so making these changes and having knowledge is the charya is very important to help maintain that strength and that path of balance through winter. So that, of course, already now we're looking forward to spring, emerging from spring in a state of health. But you also have to remember that flu season becomes more mm. predominant, cold season becomes more predominant. So we really have to maintain a good immune system at this time. And it's even more so when we travel. You know, if you want to be exposed to a virus, then get on an aeroplane. It's an incubator for illness. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, you were talking about some of the products that you like to travel with. Are there any other herbal recommendations that you could offer for Vata season? Yes, of course. As I mentioned a couple already, and Helen's also mentioned some, of course, warm Vata tea. Uh, lovely to travel with and lovely to drink regularly. It has a lovely combination of spices that maintain warmth in the body and maintain your digestion and help to balance and soothe the vata. Then also aromas, so the sense of smell is very important for our emotions. So vata, aroma oil is very nice, blissful heart. In terms of uh, oils, of course, the vata massage oil is really, really nice. If you don't like the scent, then just plain sesame oil uh, is very, mm -hmm. very good for Abhi Younger. And as I said, if you're more fitter than a nice olive oil with your aroma of choice is very good. Now in terms of herbs, it's very important to maintain our, our strength and our ability to resist disease. So Muppy has a, a particular product called Cold Season Defense. And it has some lovely herbs in it, such as Elecampane, Indian Elecampane, 
uh, hyssop, licorice. Uh, so these herbs are particularly good at maintaining respiratory health and immune health. Holy basil, tulsi is in there, which is a very good herb for our immunity as well. Other herbs such as for uh, mental balance, such as worry-free, I find very, very effective with ashwagandha, shankapushpi, guduchi. These herbs are very good, not just for our immunity, but for maintaining a settled mind. As I said, Vata governs thinking, and when it starts to get a little bit too imbalanced, you know, all the little voices there as opposed to the one voice saying, you know, focus on this, do this, there's all these little things going on, just worry and anxiety, then worry-free is very good for soothing that down. A simple herb like ashwagandha, which has been talked about on these programs before, a very powerful herb for maintaining immunity and strength and uh, very good for uh, male physiology as well. Uh, so those are some of the herbs that we can use very successfully at this time of year. Bioimmune is very good. Uh, there's a particular paste that I'd like to mention that Mapi has called Chow and Prush. It's a very, very famous Ayurvedic formula that is very good for maintaining respiratory health. It is very good for digestion, immunity. It's anti-aging. Uh, it's very, very good for vata and all doshas, actually, but more for vata season because of that ability to maintain respiratory health. It's a little bit spicy, but uh, it has some nice balance of honey and jaggery and ghee in it as well that helps balance out that spiciness. So chow and prush is also very good for depression. So if people tend to get the blues more in winter, then chow and prush is very good for that as well. So those are the, the I would say, a few of the key herbs and products that Muppy make that I find very successful for maintaining adaptability and flexibility in winter. Mm, wonderful. Um, okay, now I'm going to, charge the two of you to uh, name off, let's see, the top five or six recommendations that you could offer for the season. Um, well, we've just had so, so a list there of products. How about we do something like, uh, with, with your agreement for, for the audience, um, why don't we do sort of lifestyle, something like those types of things? Yeah, sounds great. Um, and Mark, of course, you can come in at, at any time. I like to make things uh, simple. So again, I really love our audience to memorize those qualities of Vata. And we remember the qualities of Vata. So it's cold and it's dry and it's light and it's rough, quick moving. We'll have that the same and irregular. So there's a beautiful there's a, a, an absolutely, you know, beautiful principle in Ayurveda, and it is samana vishesh. It means like increases like, opposite decreases. So if you've got that list on one side on a piece of paper of you do the opposite to actually bring Vata back into balance. If the quality is cold, the tip is warm, warm everything, warm body, warm environment, uh, keep warm outside, especially as Mark said, the extremities, the head and especially ears and, and hands and feet, you're going to be having everything warm in the way of warm food, warm meals, breakfast, lunch, dinner, uh, and um, warm teas. That will also help with our next word, which is dry. So we need to keep hydrated. And again, we've just learned about warm teas. My husband's got a lot of different uh, scientific research showing that people, as people get older, um, what happens is there's some disconnect between the, the brain's ability to discern whether we're thirsty or not it's really important to keep hydrated during winter, not only because of that dry quality, but at the same time, because again, some of the signals as we get older um, may, may not be 
as clear and, and therefore we've got to keep that for mind and physiology, physiological balance. Again, the dry, the warm oils, so that's there. And then um, uh, some unctuousness in the food. Uh, then another category, we had light. So that means more warm, grounding foods. As we know, we're not going to be having, this is not a time for salad. Uh, salad is light and also the next category, which is called rough. It's considered rough and, and light in Ayurveda and absolutely aggravating because obviously it's vata season. We need something warm and delicious and nutritious and sumptuous. That's what we need, sumptuous. Because there is a little bit of that austerity there in nature, pristine and beautiful as it is. And so we want to have something different to actually bring balance to the physiology. And so I've done um, cold and everything opposite there, 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 there. So would you like to do rough and quick and irregular? Sure. <laughs> to have the opposite. It's just a theme, just because again, with, there have been so many things that we've mentioned. This is just the opposite, Samana Vishesh. Well, as we said, the, the qualities at this time of year tend to be rough. You know, that roughness, the skin gets a little rough and drying that gets rough. So, you know, more oily, unctuous things. Stay away from chips and crackers and dry foods. You know, that would be the worst thing for winter. And, you know, quickness, as I said, the quickness of the mind, it becomes too quick, you know. As we know, in, when the vata is in balance, they have a quick mind. They add to things quickly. But then when things become too quick, you, you can always tell a vata deranged person because they everything's done quickly and they speak more quickly. It's like when people get nervous, things happen more quickly. And, and that's not so good, you know, when you want to make decisions or, or you want to um, you know, go out and draw, buy or dry, buy things. You have to think about things. So... You know, make sure you do your yoga is very important, more so in winter. Uh, pranayama, which is the yogic breathing, is very important to calm the mind down. Transcendental meditation, we recommend. It's one way to get more, we'd say, inner light. I love that. In this, this time of the year. Mm -hmm. it, it's also very, it makes the body more adaptable for stress. And changing seasons is a stressful thing. And then... Irregular, you know, we often find, you know, when you travel, what happens, I always say, is digestion just goes out the window. It doesn't matter how strong it is, you always find when you travel, it, is, it disturbs a vata. And things become more irregular, such as elimination and, and sleep habits. So that's why we've made some suggestions in terms of drinking more warm water to keep everything moving properly and, and maintaining balance to the mind so that we get, get to sleep very quickly and that we maintain a good quality of sleep to help us be rested and balanced through the day. Regular, regular, regular is the opposite of irregular. Now, what about any, any final insights for us? You've offered so much today already, but anything else as far as encouragement goes to get us through Vata season? Sure. I think probably one of the best pieces of advice would is uh, have a look at how much it costs to fly to Florida. <laughs> Don't lose your sense of humour. <laughs> Last year we went to Florida for a month. You know, you get that, you know, you get a little down in the middle of February because spring you can see it coming, but you're in this middle grips of this, these snowstorms. So we went to Florida last year. It was really lovely. I actually got sunburnt in February, which was pretty amazing. And we got to sit on the beach for a couple of weeks. And then, of course, we arrived back to the airport here. It was the worst snowstorm in three years. Come out of the airport, there's a 50-car pileup on the other side of the road. And we virtually had to crawl back to Fairfield here in Iowa uh, at about five miles an hour. It took me about four hours to get home. So we were punished for leaving Iowa. No, I'm just saying. If we can't do that, you know, if we don't have relatives in Florida we can oppose ourselves on or, or go to a warmer climate, then we have to make some change. And we have to, we have to think about this knowledge that we've given today and, and our ability to make these adaptations through very simple things, you know, changing your diet, you know, not eating ice cream now. 
um, you know, having your main meal at lunch still and having nice warm, unctuous soups and doing your oil massage. So these are strategies that are very simple to do and yet they have very profound effects on our physiology. Mm -hmm. And just a simple, as I said, before, after coming back from Florida and before going to Florida, I was doing a lot of cha-cha-cha and rumba bar, as you can imagine. Mm -hmm. But the thing, but in Florida, there's really a lot of rumba bar, cha-cha-cha. Um, most important is this, is just as we've discussed, and that is... <coughs> Don't look at the season with dread. Make it an adventure and think of Mother Nature in her wisdom, giving us a fabulous environment, different landscape and all the wonderful warm things that we can do with friends and family. We, can, we always choose for the fact of what we see that's good in life and the environment, more warmth, more family time, and we just need to be even more creative to compensate for somewhat of austerity outside and always know that Mother Nature, we cannot fool Mother Nature. The more closely we align our nature and daily routine to compensate and be in align with Mother Nature, then the happier, more blissful and in balance we're going to be. Mm. Wonderful. Thank you both so much for your time. We always love having you here and the banter between the two of you is awesome. <laughs> it's always fun to be. We're trying to be well behaved. <laughs> you did a great job. <laughs> okay, thank you for joining us, everyone who tuned in, and we hope to see you again on part of our webinar series. Thank you.